Hi, this is Eric White. In this screencast, I am going to examine the markup for sections and the markup for headers and footers and how headers and footers and sections are put together in an OpenXML word processing ML document. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a document that we can play around with and add some sections and then later add some headers and footers. I'll create a new Word document. I'll call it test. I'll open the document. I will insert some random text. I'm going to insert 50 paragraphs of four sentences per paragraph. So I'll type in equal RA and D 50 comma four. And now I have some random text. And now I'm going to come up here and I am going to insert a new section. So I'll go to Page Layout, I'll click on this Breaks drop-down, and I'll indicate that I want a section break, and the new section will start on the next page. So let's go take a look at the markup here, so that we can see what section markup looks like when there are no headers or footers. I'll save and close that document, and I'm going to drag test.docx and drop it on Visual Studio and examine this document using the OpenXML package editor power tool for Visual Studio 2010. This is a free tool that you can install on Visual Studio to enable you to directly edit OpenXML documents. You can find this tool at this link. Let's open up the main document part and look at the section markup. I'll format the XML to make it easier to see. And if we drop down here, we can see the section markup for the first section. And if we go to the bottom of the document.xml file, we can see the section properties for the second section. One interesting thing to note about these section property elements, you'll notice here that this section property element that is the last element in the body element of this document, it's a sibling to the paragraph. It's the last child element of the body element. If I come up here and look at the section property for the first section, what I see is it's a child of the paragraph properties of the last paragraph of that section. There is only one valid section property that you'll ever find that is a child of the body element, and that's the last section property of the document. Other than that, the section properties occur under the paragraph properties of the last paragraph of the section. You can see evidence of this particular aspect of the markup, if you look at the code for the split OpenXML document commandlet that is in Power Tools for OpenXML, it's not a big problem. You just have to pay attention to this. You have to know where to look for the section properties for the section that you're looking at. So I'm going to go now and add some headers and footers to those sections. And an interesting thing that you're going to note is I'm going to leave test.docx open in the Visual Studio Power Tool that enables you to edit OpenXML documents. It's perfectly fine to do that. I'm going to open the document in Word. I'm going to play around with that document. And when we return to Visual Studio, it will notice that the document has changed and prompt us to reopen the document. So I'll go back to Windows Explorer and open up test.docx. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a header for this first section. I'll go to the Insert tab. I'll click on Header. And I'll click on this first blank header. I'll type some text. This is the header for the first section. Now I'm going to go down to the second section. I'll click in the header for the second section. It has the same text that we entered for the header for the first section, and the reason is that by default, Word creates 
headers that are linked to the previous section. So I'm going to do a couple of things here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Word that I want to have a different first page. And when I tell it that I want a different first page, this button, Link to Previous, is set. I'm going to click it and turn that off. Further, I'm going to drop down here and I am going to tell Word that I want different odd and even pages. I'll click here and again I am going to tell Word don't link this header to the previous section. And if I drop down here and now I'm in the even page header, again I don't want Word to link this header to the previous section. Now let's add some text for these headers in the second section. So here I'm going to enter this is the first page header for the second section. I'll indicate that this is the odd page header for the second section. This is the even page header for the second section. So at this point in time, there are four headers in this document. There's a header for the first section, and there are three headers for the second section. In the second section, there's a header for the first page, a header for all the odd pages, and a header for the even pages. Now I'm going to close the headers and footers. I'll save this document. I'll close it. Now when I put the focus back onto Visual Studio, it tells me test.docx has changed outside the editor. Do I wish to reload it? And yes, I do. Now I'm back in the document.xml word when it wrote this part it removed all the formatting so I'll reformat the document and now if I drop down here I can find the section properties for the first section and we'll notice that there is one header reference element under these section properties and its type is default and we can see the RID is RID 7 we'll come back and look at that shortly and now let's go down to the end of the document and here is the section property element for the second section and we'll notice here that there are three header reference elements there's the even default and first the type equals default indicates that this is the header for the odd pages we can see here that the resource IDs are RID 8 9 and 10. Now that we've looked at that, let's go back to test.docx and let's look at the properties and relationships in this document. The first thing that we notice is that there are four headers here. And further, if I expand the document.xml node and look at the relationships of document.xml, I can see the four relationships to those four headers. And if I look at the relationship for header 1, I can see down here that the resource ID of this relationship is RID 7. And if I go back here, the section properties for the first section indicated that the RID is RID 7. So if we want to open up and manipulate the header for the first section, we find these section properties, we find the header reference element, the code then should get the resource ID out of the R colon ID attribute. It then iterates through the relationships of the main document part and finds the header that has the relationship of RID 7. And if we were to look at header 2, it has an RID of RID 8, 3 is RID 9, and 4 is RID 10. Now these are the relationships up here as represented by this little linked chain. And down here are the parts themselves. I'll open up header1.xml. I'll format the XML. And what we can see is that within this w colon header element, 
there is markup that looks remarkably similar to plain old ordinary markup for a main document part. In other words, there is a paragraph element here, there are paragraph properties here. The paragraph contains a run element and the run element contains a text element. And I could play around here. I could change this to have three exclamation marks, save this, and if I open test.docx, I can see that, in fact, I did change the header for the first section. That's all I'm going to cover in this screencast. See you next time.